Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. Today I will be analyzing the company of First Dips, which if everything goes as planned, it should be going public this upcoming Wednesday, June 9th, 2021 in the Nasdaq under the ticker symbol DIBS. As always, my aim with this video will be to try to summarize as good as possible the company, what is it that they do, and the most relevant points mostly extracted from the S1 filing, which by the way, in case you are interested in checking that out yourselves, uh, it will be linked down below in the description. And then, of course, if after the video you find the company interesting, you can go ahead and do your own due diligence on it. Before I start though, let me quickly give you an overview of the main topics that I will be covering in today's video. So first of all, I will start with a short introduction to the company and we will also look at some general metrics. Afterwards, we will also look briefly into the industry potential, followed as always by the financials and we will compare this with two other competitors, which are Restoration Hardware and Farfetch. And there are many more, which I will highlight throughout the video, but essentially I selected these two for the comparison. Afterwards, as always, we will look into the IPO price and valuation and we will also compare it with these two competitors that I just mentioned now. And finally, as always, I will be giving my personal opinion on the stock and my future plans with it. With that said though, and after I remind you that if you enjoyed the video, it would be super awesome if you could give it a like. Let's go for it. First tips, for those of you who might not be familiar with the website, it is essentially an online marketplace where top sellers from all over the world, which currently in the platform, they only have about 4,200 different sellers, are selling different things from pieces of art, uh, also ranging from furniture, lighting, decor, art, jewelry and watches, and also fashion. And it is also important to highlight that these sellers, it's not just like everyone can sell whatever they want, like it would be more the case in platforms such as Amazon or eBay. Here, actually, you need to pass a review process and all the sellers go through that. And apparently it is pretty strict because only about 10% of the applications to become a seller in the platform actually end up going through and being approved. The company was founded in the year 2000 and has its headquarters in New York. So it is not just a startup that started two or five years ago, but they already have a pretty long track record. And something to understand and to have extremely clear is their business model because it will help us understand all the other numbers and things that I will share afterwards. So essentially, essentially as I already mentioned, First Dips is just the online marketplace and it connects the buyers and the sellers. And essentially, if there's a buyer who wants to buy something, the seller can either decide to ship the item themselves, the seller is keeping the item, so First Dips has no, like, no responsibility on that. But if the seller prefers it, they, uh, First Dips can also help with the, with the deliver. delivery, of course, at an extra cost, and then they just simply organize that. And this is important to understand it because this means that their business model is highly scalable as they have no inventory. And it is very easy for them to grow as all they need to make sure of is that their marketplace is secure and the transactions can take place between buyers and sellers. And especially since we are talking about luxury products that they sell in their website, which is something that I still had not mentioned, it is of course important that the items are really of high quality and the sellers that are within the platform are really verified ones. So how does exactly First Dips make money? Well, they have essentially three different income streams. The first one is on subscription revenue. And this is something that every seller in the platform needs to pay regardless of how many items they sell. And this is essentially because every time that a seller posts a, an item in their platform, even if they don't end up selling it, they are still advertising it and giving it more visibility. And this is something that First Dips charges essentially for. And this revenue stream represented 27% of the total revenues in 2020. Secondly, we have the marketplace transactions fees, which this fee ranges between 5 to 50% of the price of the product. Plus on top of that, you also need to add a processing fee of 3%. Personally, if I were to be a seller, I would not like to have such a broad policy. And also I tried to Google it, look in the S1 filing, also in their website, if there was specified the price range at which certain commissions were applied, but it doesn't state anything. So I'm guessing that they do it a bit random. Of course, I assume that if the price of the item is higher, then the commission will be lower, but they don't really specify that. 
Nevertheless, they did mention in the S1 filing which one is their, uh, the average commission that they are getting from the second source of revenue, and that is a 16% of the total gross merchandising value. So from the price that does somebody lists the item at, they are getting 16% overall commission from that. And with this revenue stream, they generated in 2020 around 67% of the total revenue, being the largest revenue source. Finally, the last income stream is from advertising services within their platform, so basically from showing ads there, and this one generated only 4% of the total revenue in 2020. Now that hopefully you have clear how First Dips operates, let's go into some other general metrics to better understand the whole business. And firstly, we have the, the gross merchandising value, so the total transacted within the platform for the past 12 months uh, dated March 31st, 2021, was of $387 million. And also the current stock value as of March 31st from what sellers advertise in the platform was of $10.9 billion, which is also a pretty crazy amount. Additionally, we have that their median order value is of $1,200 and the average one stands at $2,500, which already shows that they are targeting, as we mentioned previously, the luxury segment. And finally, just two other metrics that are in the website is that the website currently has 3.5 million active users and the buyers and the sellers are distributed across more than 100 different countries. In terms of users, approximately 70% of these are based in the US and only 30% are international. And then looking at the suppliers, 39% of these are based outside the US, but only 19% of the buyers are international, which clearly shows that there is still a lot of room to expand internationally for first dips. Going deeper into suppliers and buyers analytics, we have that in 2020 there were a total of 58,000 active buyers, meaning that they purchased at least one time within the previous 12 months, with an increase of 27% versus the previous year. And in fact, when looking at the numbers for the first quarter of this 2021, it is looking even better with a 39% increase. These buyers in 2020 made an average of 2.2 orders with an average total purchase value for the year of $5,500, which could essentially be summarized in that people spend a lot of money inside the platform. And also frequent and repeat purchasers, which are often designers and that First Dips calls them trade buyers, these accounted for 27% of the total gross merchandising value of 2020. And all of these increases have also been reflected in the gross merchandising value, which increased in 22.93%, and the total orders increased in 24.66%. Finally, to end this section and something interesting to see is that 34% of the sellers that responded the annual survey that First Dip sent out at the end of last year said that for the full year 2020, First Dips had been their primary sales channel. Now moving into the industry and its potential, we have that high quality design furniture and homewares fine art and watches and jewelry was estimated to be approximately worth 129 billion globally in 2020, according to Bain and Company. And in the personal luxury market, which includes apparel, beauty and footwear, but excludes jewelry and watches, it was estimated to be worth 210 billion in 2020. And if we combine both of these, which is what First Dips is targeting, we have that it has an estimated total addressable market size of 339 billion as of 2020. This looks very good, but actually the industry is very fragmented with many different players. And talking about competitors, in their S1 filing, they mentioned that their main ones besides brick and mortar stores and their specialized websites related to that are Amazon, eBay, Etsy, Restoration Hardware, Wafer, Christie's Inc. and Southby. And in my eyes though, they forgot a very important one, which is Farfetch, although we could of course also include more competitors here in this list. Continuing with the industry potential, the personal luxury online goods market has already increased from 12% of the total sales in 2019 to an estimated 23% of the total sales in 2020. An estimation suggests that it could reach 30% of the sales in 2025, which would certainly favor, of course, first dips. 
Finally, it is important to not forget that First Dip's main buyers are high net worth individuals, which are qualified as individuals with more than $1 million in invertible assets. And these have been doing pretty well. In fact, the wealth of these high net worth individuals increased at a compound annual growth rate of 7% since 2012, and is expected to continue growing. Not only the wealth of the existing ones, but also it is calculated that these have more than doubled since 2008, and as of 2018, there were around 20 million high net worth individuals globally. At this point, let's go into the numbers of first tips. And looking first at the income statement, we see that net revenues have increased in 16% from 2019, which is okay. Not an exaggerated growth, but okay. And they have managed to reduce the net losses from 30 million to 12.5 million in 2020. And looking at its evolution, it wouldn't surprise me if they would get to profitability either this year or in 2022. And also, the performance for this first quarter of 2022 was actually much better with 43% increase versus the same quarter of 2020. It is true that last year it was already probably affected by the pandemic, but still, it's a nice growth. Finally, in terms of balance sheet, we see that they are very well capitalized and they have a debt ratio of only 32.9%, which is very conservative. Now though, let's compare their numbers with the two competitors that I selected, which are on the one hand restoration hardware that is mainly focused on luxury lifestyle market with furniture, lightning, textiles, bathware, decor and outdoor, and then Farfetch, which is an online retailer selling mostly apparel, but also jewelry, accessories and even home appliances. And I could also have included many of the ones that I mentioned previously, but I don't want this video to be longer than it's already turning out to be. On this, firstly comparing the revenues, we see that First Dips is actually competing against much larger players which are making much higher revenues. Because while First Dips made in 2020 81 million, Restoration Hardware was almost at 3 billion and Farfetch at 1.6 billion. And also, in terms of revenue growth, despite First Dips being the smallest, Farfetch has actually been growing faster at least during the past year. Then looking at the net income, while restoration hardware is more established and is profitable, neither First Dips nor Farfetch are. And actually Farfetch took a very big loss last year. And this is actually not very relevant, but we see that the net income margins are negative for First Dips and Farfetch, it was obvious due to the losses, while for restoration hardware they are standing at 7.96%. But to properly compare them, we should first check out their different valuations. And starting first with First Dips, we have that based on information available right now, its IPO price should range between $18 to $21 per share. And if we take the middle point of that, the number of shares outstanding after the offering and also the sales for this past year, 2020, we have that it should start trading at a price to sales ratio of around 8.92 times. If we compare this with Restoration Hardware and Farfetch, we see that these are currently trading at 4.53 and 9.91 times respectively. Based on this, I think that the valuation of First Dips is quite reasonable, although I don't think that it's a bar game, at least at the projected or at the middle point of the projected IPO price, because we, of course we need to see at which price it ends up trading. Because it's only trading at a slightly lower valuation than Farfetch, but Farfetch is first of all much larger in size and is growing also much faster. And I think that the only reason why, why these two valuations are so close one from the other is simply because Farfetch reported a very big loss this past year. So getting to the last part, what am I planning on doing? Well, I personally will not be investing in this company. And this is first of all because I'm certainly not in the luxury space or interested in that and even less in all of these things of art, decor and all of that. I simply cannot understand how somebody can pay more than 50, 100 euros for a lamp and there were lamps for, I don't know, 50,000 euros or even above that. Uh, so certainly that's not a sector that I'm into. And probably that's because I'm poor, I don't have that much money available that I don't know what to do with and I simply decide to buy one of these decor lamps or, or many other things of course sold in, in first dips. Um, despite this, I do see the potential of the industry but I won't be investing in it 
because first of all the company is still quite small especially when talking about the revenues and when comparing it with these only these two competitors but also if we were to compare it with many others and it's precisely these other competitors are also pushing uh, very strong and at the current valuation or at least at the projected one at the IPO uh, on IPO day sorry it is not at an attractive risk reward ratio for me to invest in it Nevertheless, please remember that everything that I share in this video is just my personal research and my opinions and that I'm not particularly interested in the niche in which First Tips is operating in. And of course, I'm no financial advisor and you should always do your own due diligence before investing in this or any stock. With that said though, this is the end of the video. What are your thoughts on First Tips, on its business model? Do you like the company? Will you be investing in it? Please let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you're not yet subscribed, and as always, see you next time.